In the Netflix docu-series called This Is Pop, rapper-producer T-Pain said that in 2013, while on a flight to an awards show, he was called to where R&B singer Usher was seated. Usher had some words that were a hard pill for T-Pain to swallow. Usher told T-Pain that his popularization of auto-tune ruined the music industry for real singers. When most of us first heard this story, it was also said that hearing this opinion from Usher sent T-Pain into a four-year depression. And very quickly after the story went viral, T-Pain took to social media to let his fans know that it was not Usher's words alone that sent him into a depression. And in fact, Usher's words were just a drop in the ocean of problems that were already going on in his life. You can see how he put that in his own words here in this tweet. Thankfully, T-Pain has come out of his depression, but today I want to talk about how strange it seems for anyone to have such strong feelings against autotune because it has been around for decades. At least something like it has been around. And that brings me to the career and untimely death of funk musician Roger Troutman of Zap and Roger. Let's get into it. If you like these videos about your favorite and most scandalous celebrities from yesteryear, and even some from today, that make the Ty Said What Ty Said channel a time capsule for the culture, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream. And comment, I subscribed, in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. Funk music master and creative genius Roger Troutman was the master of the vocoder voice distortion box long before T-Pain started using autotune. To be clear, the vocoder voice distortion box and autotune are not the same thing. The technology that each one uses is different, though to the person who is just listening to music for enjoyment, the effect that they both produce can sound very similar. Roger Troutman of Zap and Roger was a pioneer of this robotic sound. And that distinction in his sound not only set him apart from his contemporaries, but sent him on a path to success that would last for decades until his own brother ended his life. As a 13-year-old, Troutman was a budding musician setting up gigs at community functions. He asked his father for a guitar, but was told that he had to learn how to play one first. And he did, learning his father's favorite songs. Rufus Troutman, Roger's father, made the same request whenever his son asked for another instrument. Apparently Roger's father's lessons paid off because where music abilities were concerned, Roger Troutman had no limitations. He became singer, composer, songwriter, producer, multi-instrumentalist, and the founder of the band Zap, who helped spearhead the Ohio funk movement and was known for his versatility using a vocoder talk box to create computerized vocals, something that was rarely being done in music at all, but definitely not being done in the R&B and funk genres. At first, Roger Troutman had formed various bands with his four brothers, including The Human Body. In 1977, he and The Human Body issued Freedom, their first single. Within two years, Roger and his brothers were discovered by George Clinton, who signed the newly christened Zap to his Uncle Jam Records label in 1979. The original lineup consisted of Roger Troutman, Larry Troutman, Lester Troutman, Terry Troutman, Gregory Jackson, and Bobby Glover. Eventually, Roger's brother, Larry Troutman, would leave the group to work on the business side of things for the family company, Troutman Enterprises. While Roger was a member of Zap, the band recorded a number of funk hits that were played on R&B stations all over the nation. More Bounce to the Ounce, Do Wah Diddy, and I Can Make You Dance were just a few, and Roger was the breakout star. And like so many breakout stars do, he eventually went solo. Roger continued to crank out the funk by himself, with his hits like So Rough, So Tough, Do It Roger, then closing the 1980s with I Want to Be Your Man. Then, after Roger was done, his music wasn't, 
as several rap artists sampled his music. Artists including, but not limited to, EPMD and Public Enemy on the East Coast, and Volume 10 and Ice Cube on the West Coast. And it was the West Coast rappers who would help take Roger's career to the next level, because in addition to sampling his 1980s music, they wanted to create music with Roger in the 1990s, and they did. MC Hammer had Roger on his 1994 track called Don't Stop. And not West Coast, but so did H-Town when they collaborated with Roger for a rendition of Thin Line Between Love and Hate in 1996. Also in 1996, Roger collaborated with Tupac Shakur and Dr. Dre on Tupac's song California Love, earning Roger his only Grammy nomination ever. He is also featured on Snoop Dogg's Up Jump the Boogie, which wasn't released until 2015. It is these collaborations that are likely, but not certainly, but very likely one of the causes of the fallout between Roger and his brother Larry, the brother who would end Roger's life. In what would be Roger Troutman's last days, the family business, Troutman Enterprises, had filed for bankruptcy Moves to cut payroll and sell some real estate fell short. They were over $3 million in debt from secured claims that put them at risk of losing properties and collateral. They owed six and seven figure amounts to Time Warner, Warner Brother Records, First National Bank of Dayton, and First National Bank of Southwestern Ohio. And at the time of their last filing, they had less than $8,000 in a money market account. In 1995, the U.S. government sought to have the bankruptcy converted from reorganization to liquidation, citing, among other things, delinquent taxes that included yet another seven-figure sum owed to the IRS. And to add to the massive debt that the family business was in, there were also lawsuits. The family business was listed in 12 pending lawsuits making all of the problems put together appear insurmountable. When Larry left the family band, it was to run the family business. He was the president of the crumbling empire that was Troutman Enterprises. While all of the massive issues with creditor debt, IRS debt, bankruptcy conversions and lawsuits were coming to a head, this is also when Roger Troutman's solo career was experiencing the resurgence that was mentioned earlier working with MC Hammer, H-Town, Tupac, but there were many others on that list. Red Man, Blackstreet, Johnny Gill, Biggie Smalls, and Snoop Dogg. The word was that with this relaunch of his career, Roger was planning a solo tour. Now, there is part of this story that has never been confirmed by his family, but has been widely speculated and generally accepted, and it is this. Because of Roger's solo success, the motive for Larry to kill him was that Larry was jealous of his brother's newfound fame with a slightly younger audience and personal fortune that was building as a result of it. That was happening simultaneously as the family business was sinking with Larry at the helm. Whatever the motive was, we can only guess. But following are the facts from the day that Roger Troutman was killed. Early on the Sunday morning of April 25th, 1999, Larry Troutman was in his car with Roger Troutman. They were parked behind the family-owned music studios, and they were having a verbal dispute. Roger tried to leave Larry's car. Larry then shot Roger four times. Larry then drove away and minutes later shot himself once in the head using the same Smith & Wesson revolver that he used to shoot his brother. His Lincoln then crashed into a tree at the 2100 block of Harvard Boulevard. The gun was recovered inside of Larry's Lincoln, and Larry was pronounced dead at the scene, 54 years of age. As for Roger, it turns out that Larry shot him twice in the front of his torso and twice in the back. Roger was found in the alley between Catalpa Drive and Ravenwood Avenue, behind Roger T. Enterprises Incorporated. Witnesses told police that the gunman left in a black car. Yes, Larry's Lincoln was black. 
Roger was taken to the Good Samaritan Hospital and Health Center where he died that same morning at age 47. May they both rest in peace, if that is even possible. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ty Said What Ty Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that applaud button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video. If you have a business, product, service, YouTube channel, or social media account that you would like to promote on my channel, email me at taiwan at taisaidwhattaisaid.com or use the submission form on my website, taisaidwhattaisaid.com, to get rates for advertising on my community tab, my live streams, and or my edited videos, just like this one.